Welcome to another speaking tip. Recently, I sent out an email out to my email list and asked my viewers and listeners to let me know what they wanted me to talk about. And the number one response I got back was how to do effective Zoom calls. And of course, over this last year with the pandemic and all the health issues we've had, almost the entire world has moved to a virtual environment. So I wanna share with you some of the things I've done to give myself an effective Zoom presentation. This is nowhere the perfect professional setting I want, but I had to take my existing setting and I had to make it work with Zoom. Quite also, I was doing a lot of Zoom interviews before the pandemic. So I actually had to set this up so I had a decently professional setting that I was in. A couple of points I just wanna go over right up front. You need to look at your environment that you're in and figure out how can you set that up to have, number one, a nice background behind you. I see so many people that have door frames or they got their kitchen in the background and their wife or their husband is coming through and making coffee or the dog's walking through the, the background on it. Or, you know, they've got, they've got things in the background, the simplicity is that are distracting to the viewer. And anything that's in the background that's gonna be distracting is going to cause a problem when you're doing your presentations. Now, quite honestly, you see these pictures I've had. Sometimes those picture frames get out of square. <laughs> and I've had people tell me that drives them nuts that my pictures aren't straight behind me. Okay? And I had to look on my Zoom to make sure that the pictures were straight in the Zoom because they would be straight in real life, but they wouldn't be straight in the Zoom. So I sort of had to alter them to make sure that there was nothing distracting behind me from my Zoom. So. Make sure your background is good and clean. Make sure your lighting is good. I had some real lighting issues. I'm gonna show you what I had to do to handle my lighting issues. Your microphone setup needs to be good. In a lot of places, headsets or earbuds are acceptable. From my standpoint, from more of a professional presentation, I didn't wanna have a headset on or earbuds. I wanted to be able to be live here talking to you. So I had to set up a specific issue with my microphone, which I'll share with you. And the other thing is making sure that your computer is actually the processor on it is robust enough that it can handle the video interface. And a problem I had is I had a, I had a very light, small, good laptop for business. And I'll just show you what I have here. I have a Lenovo, which is a small laptop that I usually work off. Now I had a smaller, lighter one, but the processor was too slow. And when I worked with it on Zoom, my audio lagged behind my video. So I bought another computer, which I'm gonna show you in a second, that was a gaming computer that had a high, uh, what a, a powerful processor on it that could process my video without any problem whatsoever. And that's my Zoom computer. So what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna pull the curtain back and I'm gonna show you what my office looks like. And it does not look like this that you see on Zoom. It's a working office. I'm in it every day. I've got a lot of different business I do but I, I have it set up so I can have a good Zoom presentation. So let me share the screen with you. Okay, now here you see, this is my office setup. So what, to handle the lighting, you can see my cursor here, a couple of things I've got. I've got two big lights up here that I had to put in to give myself enough light so that I look good on Zoom. I've got good lights in my office, but it was not enough for Zoom. These are not that expensive. I bought a green screen with this whole lighting package for, I think it was around $100. It really was not that expensive. And I've got a, a, a large fluorescent bulb in each one of these, I, I call them backwards umbrellas. Okay. I've got a high definition camera on a tripod right down here. Okay. So that's set up right over the top of the laptop I'm looking at right here. Now I wanted the high definition camera because the other laptop I had didn't have a good camera on it. And I wanted to make sure I had the best definition I could. The other thing was I wanted to be able to adjust my camera separate from my computer. So uh, the, the, you'll see the tripod I have is for a big camera. It's a little, a little bit overkill right now, but it's what I had available. Now up here is my microphone, okay? Now it's maybe a little bit hard to see, but this is a Yeti microphone. And I used to put it right down here in front of me. And I felt like I was, I thought it was clever. It looked great. It was like, I was like Larry King is what I thought. I'm Larry King in my interview and I'm talking to my microphone. But the feedback I got from my Toastmasters club and some other close friends I had, they said the microphone was a major distraction. 
And here's one of the things to, to look at. Watch my hands. I'm going to pop out of here for a second. Okay, watch my hands. My hands are back here. You can see how big they are. So if the microphone's back here and the microphone's this big, that's one thing. But if I bring that microphone forward, you can see how big my hands get <laughs> as I come forward on the camera. So when the microphone was forward, it literally looked like it was twice as big as it was. And it was a distraction. So I wound up for, I think it was $25. I bought this. I have a bar right here that suspends the microphone. And just so you know, my, my microphone is... I'm almost touching it right there, is just right above my screen. So you cannot see it, but it picks up my voice very well. A couple other points. I have two computer screens down here. This is my laptop, my gaming computer that my, my all my Zoom activities on. And then I use this computer over here, like I'm doing right now, for my uh, PowerPoint presentations. If I have another screen up, or anything like that, I have so I can see the two screens, so I can keep my attention on the audience, but I can see what the PowerPoint is and talk about the PowerPoint as I as I want to talk about it. And then I have my work computer here. Now this does cause some issues because people will send me emails with a link in it that I have to use on my other computer, so I do have to transfer between the two computers. But that's something that I that I want to do. Now let's show you the other side of this because there's some other issues that I was dealing with. So let's look at this. This is from the backside. So now you see the backside of my office. Now you can see I've got a fairly, I'm just gonna say busy office. It's a working office that I have. Okay, here's my camera. Here's my microphone. Here's my lighting set. Okay, now I'm working with this on an ongoing basis. I'm working in my office, but I have to stop and have a clean Zoom presentation. So what you see here is that I have a lot of paperwork I'm doing, a lot of stuff's crossing my desk. I mean, I'm going to show you this too. Behind me on my credenza, actually, let me pop out of this because I'm, I always forget I'm, doing, I'm in that. Behind me on my credenza, I've actually got things on my credenza I work with. But here's what I know. You can't see it when I'm sitting in front of you. This is the vision. This is the, the sight you get. So I'm not worried about that. I can pop onto Zoom right away and have a nice clean Zoom call and you don't know what's sitting behind me. The same thing can work for you. So you can see a little bit of what my, what my office setup is. And then I wanna show you this other problem I had. Here we go. So these are the windows above me. I have these high windows in my office. And what happened is I had this halo effect that was coming over my shoulders. And no matter how much light I put on the front of me, I could not counter the amount of light I was getting through my windows. So what I did, I went down to the office supply store, Staples, and I bought some foam core, it's like presentation board that you would put poster board. And I cut it to the exact size of the window because I taped some towels up there at one point just to see if I cut the light out, but it looked horrible from the front of my house. So I just cut the foam core uh, blocks in there and put them in there, which blocked out the light and diffused it so that I don't have that halo effect coming over the top of me right now. But you can see the microphone, how it's set up. So some of the things that I had to do to actually make my office work as a good Zoom presentation, that something that I felt comfortable with, with the amount of the amount of presentations I do, people felt that they were in a professional environment, that I had my act together. Uh, from that standpoint. So those are some of the things that I said that I had to do to work out making Zoom work in my office. I, I, it wasn't a situation that I had a spare room in my house and I could just set up a Zoom studio just by my just by itself. That would, that, that would be great, but that wasn't the case. I had to make do with what I had. Okay. Now, a couple other things I want to touch on, and I don't think these are good, but I'm going to show you is the virtual background scenario. And I've got a couple different virtual backgrounds here. So here's a virtual background. This is a photo I took over at a uh, party I was at in Los Angeles. Virtual backgrounds, if you look at my head right now, you can see that I, there's a distraction. And the reason is, is the virtual background's going against my office background and the camera's having a hard time figuring out what is my head and what's the background. Okay. So I'm not a big fan of virtual backgrounds because of this I don't want to call it a halo effect. It's like a blurring effect that happens with them. I have seen virtual backgrounds work very well 
where people have a green screen behind them. Because the green screen is solid and the camera can very easily just decipher what is, what's the body, what's in the, what's in the picture, what's not in the picture. Uh, a couple things about green screens that I've learned. I had a, I have a big cloth I bought and it's wrinkled and the wrinkles show up on the green screen. So the best green screens I've used are painted walls. You paint them that color and it's solid and it's smooth and the light reflects off of it. If you're gonna have a cloth situation, you actually need to take clamps and be able to see where you can really draw the cloth down so you have a tight, a tight green screen behind you to get that effect that, that you need. Those are some of the things that I've seen. So anyway, hopefully this gives you a little insight into what I had to do to set up a good Zoom set, setting. And it, the fact is you need to figure out for yourself what extent you need to go to to set it up. I will say this, I did not spend a lot of money on it. I probably have between the camera I bought, the microphone I bought, the lights that I bought, and of course the little foam core inserts in my window were not much at all, but I probably have $300 set up in the, my whole Zoom setup. Not counting my computer, my computer was more than that, uh, but I don't look at that as the Zoom setup. I had to do that because of the, the existing computer I had. So I hope, Again, this gives you some insight in what to do to set up a good, good Zoom call, good Zoom presentation. And as I said, you're going to have to figure out what you're going to have to do for your environment, but put something together that looks professional, that you're proud of, that you can go online, and it looks like you, you are in a setting that is equivalent to the knowledge transfer that you're offering to your, to your audience. There you have it. Go out and make it a great day. I'll see you next week with some more Zoom presentation tips.